here is the perfect seven-day Paris trip itinerary for the first timers and for those who want to have a more memorable trip rather than getting some cute Instagram photos. Before we get started, I want you to know that Paris is composed of 20 arrondissements, meaning districts. They spiral out clockwise, starting from the center of the city, which is where the Louvre Museum is. The central arrondissements are small and they get larger as they spiral out. By the end of this video, you will get a much better understanding of each arrondissement, which is essential in planning Paris trip, because the city is not small. That being said, let's get started. Day 1 If you are flying to Paris and expecting to have jet lag, don't plan on doing much except a boat tour or cruise if you are fancy, on the Seine River. While you don't have to do anything except sitting down and listening to a guide, you can effortlessly enjoy the Paris scenery passing right by you, including the Eiffel Tower. This activity will make you look forward to the Paris trip that you are going to have, yet doesn't drain your energy too much on the first day. You will find several boat tour agencies, and my personal recommendation is go with Vendette's du Pont Nephew, located right below the famous Pont Nephew Bridge, and on a small island called El saint -Rue. Yes, in the Seine River, there are two small natural islands. You can walk there as there are several bridges to get there. And Notre Dame is also located on this island. This area is within the fourth arrondissement of Paris. It's the middle of the Paris between the left bank and right bank. In other words, a perfect starting point for your Paris trip. Day 2 Now you caught up with the sleep and jet lag, you are ready for a full day program. So let's go to the Louvre Museum, located within the first arrondissement. Inarguably, the Louvre is the most anticipated attraction in Paris. Spoiler alert, it's an excellent museum. It's huge, so you can see everything there in one visit. Do a little research a day before the visit as to what you want to see and make a list of those. Inside the Louvre, you can spend as much time as you like, since they have cafes, food courts, and shops where you can take a break from seeing their enormous collections of all sorts of art. If you want to have a memorable experience at this museum, plan to stay here at least for a half day and take in what the Louvre has to offer. Curious about the line at the Mona Lisa painting? It depends on the season, but it could be 30 minutes to hours. If the line is less than an hour, I'd say it's totally worth the wait. After you are done with the museum, hang out in the beautiful Tuileries garden surrounded by this cool pond and a miniature Arc de Triomphe and Ferris wheel all at once. Day 3 Since you had a full program at the museum yesterday, why don't you do something local and more spontaneous this time? Explore a district of Le Marie, a sophisticated and fashionable neighborhood full of chic shops, cute restaurants and cafes. Le Marie is located in the 3rd and 4th arrondissement. You can stroll around this town, check out some of the photogenic landmarks, including Place Royal, Hotel de Sully Garden, and Hotel de Ville. Le Marie is also known for its Jewish quarter. Check that out as well. Day 4. You've been downtown for a while. Let's change the scenery and go up to Montmartre. A large hill in Paris, located in the 18th arrondissement where you can have a stunning view of the city, visit the beautiful Basilica Sacred Car on its summit, and walk around the neighborhood where many famous artists from the late to early 20th centuries, including Monet, Renoir, Picasso, and Go, had lived, worked, and had studios. Personally, this was one of my favorite parts of the trip. And if you happen to go there on the weekend or Monday, I suggest you check out the flea market in the north of Walmart. Around 2,500 vintage and antique stores are there for you to indulge in souvenir shopping. Day 5 Enough with the right bank of the Paris. Let's go to the left bank of the Paris, the south of the Seine River. First stop is Latin Quarter, located in the 5th arrondissement. Latin Quarter has young college town vibes as it is home to Sorbonne University. You can stop by the famous Shakespeare & Co bookstore, get a view of Notre Dame, 
and find cheaper eats, bustling moods, and diverse food, including Starbucks and McDonald's. You never know. And spend the afternoon at Musée d'Orsay, another major art museum with 19th and 20th century collections. You will see great collections of impressionists in this museum. Day 6. Now you've been seen Paris, you might start thinking about going shopping and bringing something nice for yourself home. Paris is a home for world-famous designers and their luxury brands. Buying luxury goods in Paris is recommended if it's your thing, of course, because you can save a good 10 to 30 percent, depending on what you buy. The prices are lower in Paris and you get tax exemptions. Bring your ID and credit card and ask the associate for tax exemption at the store. Let's go to the Champs-Élysées. It's the world's most famous commercial streets and it connects Arc de Triomphe, one of the most famous monuments in Paris, with the Place de la Concorde, a major public square where in the past Marie Antoinette and King Louis were executed during the French Revolution. Day 7. Last but not least, you have to check out Saint-Germain-du-Pré. Located in the 6th arrondissement, once a meeting point for existentialists, painters, and writers in the late 19th and early 20th century. This town still carries the warm and intelligent vibe, with nice cafes and restaurants to check out. Luxembourg Garden, I would say the most beautiful garden in Paris, is also in this arrondissement. It's a great spot to reminisce about your Paris trip so far. For the finale of your trip, I suggest Eiffel Tower. It's located in the 7th arrondissement, a bit apart from the center of Paris. Take pictures, hang out in the park, stay nearby for dinner or drinks, and wait for the sunset. And finally, enjoy the nightlife show. Now your travel comes full circle. I hope this video gives you some good ideas and helps you plan your Paris trip. If you are planning to spend more time in Paris and looking for a day or weekend trip out of it, I highly suggest you to check out my Lyon travel vlog. During my 9 days of Paris trip, I went to Lyon for one and a half days. The TGV train will get you from Paris to Lyon within 2 hours. Lyon was a great addition to my Paris trip, so check that out as well. Click the link above. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a new video coming every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.